So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Coralec onto an SD card and boot it from your Amlogic TV box. My name is Matthew and you're watching another tutorial by the MXQ project. Okay, so this process is pretty straightforward actually. If you followed our Librelect tutorials in the past, this is basically the same. The only difference is that I'm going to be showing you a few different links, such as where to download Coralec from. So as you can see, I am on Coralec's download page now. It's on GitHub. And again, I will leave those links in the description for you guys. So the process here is really straightforward. They are all ready to download and you can take your pick. So if you've got an S912 device, you will be selecting this one just here. And if you have an S905 generic device, again, you'll just select this one just here. And if again, if you've got maybe an Odroid C2, which has an S905 in it, you'll select this one, our Ali Potato. That is a development board, if you weren't already aware. And again, if you've got these ones specific. So I'm going to be downloading the S912 one because I've got a a Wii chip V7, I think it's called, and that has an S912 processor inside it. So I want to download this one. And there we go. We can just select that to download. Now we can move on to the next part. So once we've downloaded Coralec, place it onto your desktop or somewhere nice and easy to get hold of. And you'll notice it says .image.gz at the bottom of the file name. Now we need to unzip this because we need it to just to say .img at the end of the file name. So if you haven't already, you need to install a unzip tool. So I wanna leave a link in the description below to where you can get hold of 7-zip. That's a free unzip tool, but I'm just gonna quickly unzip it here and extract it very quickly just using WinZip. And there we go, nice and quick. Doesn't take too long to do that. And there we go, that's our IMG image file, Coralec. Now, here is a good time to insert your SD card. And if you've not used your SD card in a while, or if you've maybe used it for some other things, you need to format it to FAT32. So select your SD card, of course, insert it into your computer. So mine's just here. And mine's already been used for Coralec, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do it anyway. So right and click, and then click format, and then format it to FAT32. This just ensures that it's all ready to take the Coralec system. The chances are it will anyway, but we're gonna do this format in regardless. So there we go. So we can close all that down now. And you can use a tool called Win32 Disk Imager. This is gonna write Coralec onto your SD card. Now, a couple of people have been asking, can you use Etcher? Yes, absolutely, of course you can. It's a little bit more user-friendly, the interface for it. So if you want to use Etcher, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and use that. But I'm going to be using Win32 Disk Imager. Again, links will be in the description for those tools. Just install it onto your computer. It's a very simple program. It doesn't take too long to download or install. Now, load up Win32 Disk Imager. Of course, make sure your SD card is inserted into your computer at this point. And then you'll see where it says device. Just select where your device is stored. So mine's on drive H. If you've got other USB sticks, etc., make sure you select in the SD card you want to write Coralec onto. So mine's H. And then just this little folder just here, we need to select the Coralec image file. Now mine's just there. There we go. And we can click open. And now we can click write and then confirm it. So this process won't take very long, but it will depend on how fast your SD card is. Mine's a pretty quick one. I think it's a 80 megabytes write speed, I think it is. So pretty quick for an SD card. So it shouldn't take too long at all. As you can see, it's flying through the write process. But all this is doing is writing Coralec, creating the partitions on your SD card. And we can fully reverse this process later on using a tool called SD card formatter. Again, we have links in the description on a tutorial on how exa exactly how to do that. So once that's done, right successful, you just click OK. So now it's the final process of how to set up Coralec on your SD card. So go back to your SD card, wherever it is, and you'll notice that it says 
351 megabytes free or 511 megabytes. Now that is a 32 gigabyte SD card. And you're probably thinking to yourself, where the hell has the rest of my storage gone on my SD card? Well, this is a Linux system, kind of based on Linux anyway. And what it does is creates two partitions. One partition for storage, so that's my, the rest of my 31 and a half gigabytes. And the other half, and the rest of it, what we can see here, is for the actual operating system itself. And that's where everything's stored for that. So don't worry too much. The SD card format until, again, links in the description how to actually do that and where to actually download it from. That tool will remove those partitions and return your SD card back to normal. So all you need to do is you need to go into Coralec and then you'll see all these files and a folder just here. Now you'll see this one just here. This is a DTB file. Now this is really important because this is part of the process. We're going to be removing this and replacing it. This stands for device tree blob and these are quite specific to individual pieces of hardware. So I've got this we chip v7 here with the s912 if you've maybe got a s905 box it will be different device trees etc of course you've got the different files that i showed you on the coral download page specific to different amorgic processors so we have different device trees for different you know devices basically so we can delete this because this is probably not going to work on my box. It might do. We can try it, of course. We can, of course, we can try it. But the chances are it won't work. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you where to get your device trees from. So if we go into device trees just here, handily, we can go into here and we'll see all of these ones. So my box, my WeChip V7 box with the S912 processor has three gigabytes of RAM. So I'm going to select this one. So the chances are this is going to work. This might might work as well, the Q201. This might want as well. Actually, I think it's this one. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. This is the part where you might have to try a few of them before you get it working. Experience is, you know, a good thing with this sort of thing because you'll probably remember which specific device tree is going to work with each piece of hardware so when they release new things etc you know which one's going to work i know with LibreLeck all the different device trees you eventually remembered which one worked with which device so it's just a case of trying them out a few times but as long as you pair up the right gigabytes the right right amount of ram should i say then you shouldn't go too far wrong so this says here three gigabytes just here so i want to copy that and then i want to go back here and then click paste and then all I'm going to do is rename it. I'm going to rename it to dtb.img. And that, guys, makes the SD card ready to boot from your Android TV box. Let's move over to the Android TV box now. Let's try and boot it. Now, the next process is the easiest part of this whole tutorial. All you need to do is you need to grab your Amlogic TV box and then insert your SD card into the SD card tray. Prep your TV, get it all turned on, get it onto the right HDMI channel, whatever. Get the HDMI cable inserted into your Android TV box. Now, the next thing we need to do is turn on the power. But some TV boxes require you to hold in something that we call the AV reset button. Now, this is sometimes located in the AV reset port or it's also located elsewhere on the box. So it might be underneath, it might be on the side, it might be a little hole somewhere. All you need to do is find something thin enough, insert into there, and you should feel it click in a little bit. Hold that in, and then apply power. Hopefully the Coralec Splash logo should appear, and then that's it. Great, fantastic. It should boot in, and then you can follow the actual process to actually set up Kodi, etc., etc. Now, a few things you, you need to be aware of when using Coralec. Now, the developer says that he only recommends running Coralec at the moment from an SD card. So don't, please don't install it onto your internal storage. The chances are it will totally mess it up. Now you can do this. It's pretty straightforward to do this. I'm not going to be showing you how. If you really want to know how, there is a LibreLeck tutorial and it's basically the same process. But guys, I don't think you should be doing it because it could mess up your hardware. Running it from an SD card gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you a really fast Kodi experience. And as well as that, you get to keep Android. And those two systems will run perfectly together, no problems at all. Because, of course, Android has all those different apps that you might want to use. 
And obviously Kodi is quite a hardware intensive application anyway. So running it on, on an SD card gives you that option and it gives you just a really good experience. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it gets you up and running with CoreLeck. And yeah, thanks again for watching guys. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description to the CoreLeck forums. All the different information is in there. So please guys go and check it out, support them because this is a community driven development and without you guys this well it, it just won't exist at all big thanks to kazak because without him this wouldn't exist and of course all the different developers involved etc you can check them all out on the links but i will leave it in the description below don't forget to check out our website mxqproject.com our facebook group a bunch of really really smart guys over there they will help you out with all sorts of different technical issues and of course our twitter at mxqproject if you haven't already, subscribe and of course click that little bell icon to keep notified of all our uploads that we produce a couple of times a week. It really just depends on what we're doing. But yeah, thanks again for watching guys and we shall see you very, very soon.